Welcome to another edition of In Between the Pages with James Hunt Jr., where we go in between the actual pages. We do. Hi, I'm James Hunt Jr., head of JLJ Media. I'm the JLJ of JLJ Media, so say that five times fast. Um, and I'm here bringing you authors of all kinds. And this one's good because this, this is like a very soapy, soap-esque book. It's a, it's a drama. It has all kinds of goodness in here. It's called Broken Circle. And it's subtitled book one of the Broken series. So that means more is coming. We'll talk to about that also. But my guest was born in Queens, New York. I had never, yes. been, to Queens, I had never been to Queens since I was an adult. My family's from Brooklyn. Um, but he's lived in other places too. But he's, he's in Virginia currently. No, you're in Virginia currently. Yes, you're in Virginia currently. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to find out more about him and what is his love of soap opera and also the impetus for this book. This book was in development a long time ago, but he went back to it. So we have it's a whole story there. Welcome, yeah. Jason Jose. Thank Hi, you so much, Jay. How you doing, man? Good. Very good to see you. Uh, we know each other from my stuff when things are going on. And I've been promoting this book for the last couple of months, and I'm telling you it's good. Um, and some people have bought it because they told me because they, they'll be promoting it. They, they bought it. Enjoyed it. One girl said she enjoyed it. I don't know if you were on the chat when she said it. I was like, I think he's on the chat. I'm not sure. Um, it was, I mean, oh, uh, it was a, there's somebody on there who bought it because I did. And the other morning, you have been on the chat. And then she came on later, and it was Veta Worship. She goes by, and she says she loves the book. So, oh, okay. so I'm trying to order. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, she, so Veta likes your book. So I'm I'm sorry for the genders. I'm not sure what gender you are, but they are. But I they loved your book. They said so. Um, <laughs> Jeez. folks body. So yeah. So there you go. But that, that's our plan. Um, number one, how proud of you to have this out here finally? Because again, you started this like 20 years ago. Put it down. And came mm. back to it. How happy they are you that it's out now? I'm I'm so happy that I got it finished <laughs> and got it to the point where it's out and available for people to read because I didn't know how I was going to do that. I didn't know the process or anything. I had to learn as I went, you know, and did the independent uh, publishing thing and just made sure I did everything correctly to get it out and. I'm just ecstatic that it's out. I'm trying to get the next one done. <laughs> but a lot of work things going on, so I haven't had time to like really get down to it. But I, I hopefully I'll get it done by the end of this year. Well, this one, this next book will come sooner than this last book, obviously. So that's yeah, a good yeah. thing. <laughs> we understand it can take some time. You took some time with this one, so we understand it take a little bit of time. Uh so describe, I, I always ask authors to describe their own books. And I'm always curious how they describe it. And I usually tell my opinion, but I want to hear, how do you describe Broken Circle? What is, what is, what is it about? It is a soapy mess. <laughs> it's about, <laughs> See, I um, love it. Soapy mess, I love it. So you have college graduates who have, you know, gone their own way and found success or not so much success um, after about five years. They come back together. They were close-knit friends in college. Now they've come back. Two of them had a kind of weird friendship slash maybe love affair going on and nothing really came of it in college because one of them was kind of out there doing their thing and the other one was very determined to stay on track to get their college degree and didn't want anything to deter from that. And they it was just, they couldn't connect then, but they're back together in New York city, my favorite town. And yes. they are trying to see if this is going to work now that everybody's settled and well, supposedly everybody's settled and uh, can focus on relationship now. Um, uh, Corey is the rich guy who's, you know, been pampered all his life. His parents gave him everything and he's running his family's company. He has a kid with his first wife that they're divorced now. So all sorts of things are going to come about from there. Yeah. Then you have Jelaine who's, she's media executive. She's producer. She's like driven. Oprah is her favorite. <laughs> she, oh yeah. She does. You know, everything she needs to do to run this this television show, this um, talk show, kind of like a Maury type show with the host um, and something happens there and a lot of stuff happens. It's a lot of twists and turns. Yes, there are. And it's, it's and he says a mess, a mess in a good way. Yes. Um, I like that. <laughs> I do. Um, Why did you choose the, um, the setting of 
college friends coming back together. Where, where did the premise kind of come for you, the inspiration for that? That's kind of uh, mirroring my life, kind of. Um, I have a very strong group of friends. I kind of based some of the characters off of them. They're, you know, they're like, they can't read the book. It's like, it's too much of me. And then I'm like, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too much so, of me. I mean, I don't, I don't know people that are like ridiculously rich like Corey, but <laughs> I mean, it's just adding that soap dynamic to it. Yeah. But a lot of it came from uh, a part of my life that was, I was going through some things and I wanted to get some things out. I just one day just started writing. I came up with the first couple of chapters and it was like a release for me. It was like, okay, that's over with. Now we can focus on moving on. And then I said, you know what? Let me come back to this. And it just came to me one day. I, I can't leave that just sitting there. I've got to finish. I'm one of these people that likes to start, have trouble finishing. <laughs> but yeah. it, it got to that point where just, just finish it. Just do it and see what comes of it. Yeah, no, I like, not like that. But, you know, we all, we're all inspired by different things. And so um, are any of the characters... So obviously you embellish for story. You embellish for story. Mm -hmm. Are any of them based off of any of the soap characters you liked? <laughs> um, like loosely, based off like soap, loosely, like loosely based off of anybody. Uh, yeah. Um, one character, I, uh, Mark, the um, one of the exes that comes into play, he really gives me a Roger Thorpe kind of vibe. Okay, I like that. See, I like that. I like that. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let me see how I could do this. Make this like this guy like a Roger Thorpe. Yeah. Or something like that. Yes. Uh and uh, you know folks, we all get influences everywhere. So I'm just curious if anybody in there you're doing that. Um mm -hmm. I it feel when you read the book, it feels like someone who enjoys the drama, love you know, storylines on life. Um, and it reads, it's a very nice read, I want to tell you. I, I was like, it was, it was easy to read, nice to read, uh, twists and turns, mm -hmm. you know, bitchy characters, bitchy dialogue, <laughs> all that stuff. I loved it. No, I'm saying it's, it's really, it's a great, it's a, I tell you all, you just grab this book, you know, if, you're, if, you, if you take a train to work or you're going to fly somewhere, really, whatever, it's a great book to get. Um, and it's fun because you get to read it and, and get lost in this world um, mm -hmm. that you created. Um, and I'm assuming that's kind of that was part of, you know, and New York City is a great backdrop anyway. It's always a great oh, yeah. backdrop. I love uh, it. I, I, if I was ever going to write anything, I said, I got to do it in my town. Yes. I've, yeah. I haven't li lived, lived there in almost 30 years, but I, I still got family there. I still try to get up there as many times as I can. And I just always loved it. I was felt very privileged to be born and raised and lived in a town like that where so so much things that are available to you you yeah. know you gotta have money but you know i didn't have money all the time but <laughs> yes you do um it, it is it is so expensive to live i just had this talk with new yorkers the other day yesterday mm -hmm. on our show about how expensive it is to live there because i was saying why don't you live there i know it's expensive virginia yeah. i'm sure it's much cheaper <laughs> to live virginia and you're not Very. far away and you're not that far away i mean you're not that far no. away um so uh, the, I always get the East Coast is so all those states are right next to each other. Like you know, California takes up most of the West Coast. Right. So <laughs> get somewhere it's like, oh well, but you go to different states in in two hours and somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, that, Where I'm at, I'm right in North Carolina border, so I could do that too. Yes. Um, now for you, mm -hmm. are you sure you're happy to have the book out? I always say when I put books out myself, there's always a little nervousness. You're like, okay, right before you put it out. Um, it seems to be received really well, but were you nervous at first to put out finally after 20 some years, put this book out? Was it kind of nerve wracking? Yes. I'm very skittish. I was like, do I really want to do this? Um, did I, th I thought that maybe I was a little outdated maybe because I started it so long ago and I had to work on a lot of things like, you know, updating maybe some of the slang and stuff like that. They're, they're supposed to be 20 something years old, but, <laughs> oh, oh my God! You're right. Twenty yeah. years now from Chelsea to the, mm -hmm. yeah, that's all right. Yeah, so it was it was a lot of things that, and then the um, trying to write the love scenes and stuff like that. Do, do I want to make it? How do I want to make it? Do I want to make it real raunchy, raunchy type stuff, or do I want to make it like tasteful? 
you know, or somewhere in between. And I don't know. I just wrote and I tried not to be vulgar. <laughs> so what? So, so that's, this, is, this, is, this is in between the pages. I want to ask mm -hmm. that a little bit. I want to go down the road. To do love scenes in a book because you could go from just being um, a PG thirteen book to being mm -hmm. an erotic book. I mean, you go in that right. thing. I was love scenes. So, well, how did you make that? How did you make that distinction? I mean, when you were writing, you were like, "I'll go this far and then stop." Like, I'll do this much, but I won't do. Like, how did that go for you? Um, when I got to that part, I was thinking about who was going to read the book, who I wanted to read the book, and I wanted my aunties to read the book. So I said, "Well." we can't get real raunchy because they will get to that part and stop reading the book period you know it's, you know especially there's you know alternative lifestyles and stuff in there yes, and yes. whatnot so i tried to make it so that you know I, I felt my aunties would still like it and don't think that i'm you know a creep or something well for so. you you kept them in mind you kept some of your family in mind as your and your community in mind as you're writing a book. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I definitely yeah. wanted that, and oh, my yeah. and, and I wanted to, something that my mother would have read if she was still here. But so that's another thing. Okay, I like that. Um, and so you felt like you felt like you achieved that. I mean, I, I mean, I think you have. Yeah. There's nothing. In, there's nothing in here that's like super crazy or nothing mm -hmm. uh, at all. So I think I think you did achieve that. Um, so what was so when you decided to pick up the book again, what was your discipline? Was it like you wrote when you could? Did you set aside a time? Because we always like to ask you, I always ask you that. Like, when do you write? Like, how do you do it? When do you write? I'm like, I'm gonna ask you. So when did you write? I wrote at work. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote if at you're work. Watching at work. I have <laughs> job too. Not, it's not, it's not the job that I'm at. Now. Oh, okay, never mind. Um, okay, never mind. Okay, so this I had another job. job. It's not the job he's doing it as oh, back in the day. Yeah. I don't have time to do anything but work <laughs> at this job. Um, I was at a call center and there were times when, and I had the late shift and there were times when there was absolutely no calls coming in at yeah. all. I'd be lucky to get maybe one or two calls a day in an eight hour period. So I had a lot of time <laughs> to yeah. sit yeah. there and just write stuff. And I just did it. And I had a couple of people that were sitting next to me. I said, how does this look? I sent them a chapter, let them read it. I said, oh, I like this. Keep going, keep going. So they were giving me encouragement to continue. So luckily that happened and I'm just glad it came out. <laughs> and did you did you write on a computer? Did you handwrite? Like, oh, that's also something we like, like to hear from people. How did you, how did you write this? Oh, definitely on the computer. I wrote it on Word, okay. uh, just a regular Word program. And that's all they had at the job. <laughs> so, and then when I was finished with chapters, I just emailed it to myself, uh, maybe polished up some stuff at home. Yeah. Uh, but most of it was on um, Word. So I'm going to age myself for a second, <clears throat> as I tend to do sometimes. <laughs> uh, I, and, and we're recording this on September 11th. So, you know, shout out to all the folks in New York. I, mm -hmm. I worked at Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter at the time. So I mm -hmm. lost 13 employees. So it was a very rough day for me and my colleagues. Mm -hmm. um, but on a side note, but before that, I was writing a book, um, and uh, I was also a switchboard operator. And there was a couple of hours where it was kind of dead. And so I wasn't mm -hmm. really worried either. I did write when I had those couple of hours. I was like, I'll just all write. Mm -hmm. And and back then, we didn't, and I had to use a disk. I put the disk in at a zip drive. <laughs> That's how old I am. And I type on a computer, save it to the disk, zip disk, and then take the disk home. Oh, uh, that's how. But so it's funny you say that. I wrote I wrote a book that way too. I, I actually haven't released that book. I should release it one day. Um, but that was back in two thousand and one. Uh, so like, but I remember I had time, I had free time, and by but I mean we're laughing about this, but I also think sometimes, um, because we're, we have busy lives or busy jobs, if you can find you can't find time to write. I mean that's the whole thing, right? There is time. You have to organize it sometimes, but you can find time, right? Yeah, yeah, I. I do my best to try that's why i'm like stuck right now i'm on this second book i'm on like honestly i'm on chapter three okay so i got to you know really put some time in and and get it done my hobbies role-playing games and stuff like that video games you know so i got a lot of friends that hey jump into this game i'm like oh okay i i think i have time but Usually, I, I got to stop. Well, I got to take 
time off. I'm, if I when I get like vacation, which I'm having soon, I'm just gonna take a lot of time off and just sit in my room, turn off all of my games. It's just right to get it done. <laughs> you're, a, you're a gamer. So I think oh, you can't, you can't help it. You're a gamer. You can't help it. You can't help that. It's so funny. I was thinking uh, about going taking my vacation like you're going out of town. Yes. I was thinking about going on vacation too. I might just stay because it's cheaper that way. Just stay home. <laughs> I wonder what it's cheaper. Right? I I just can't stay home because I treat people needing me. So like I gotta leave. Because trust me, if I could do a staycation, I would have done that myself. But my fa- I, I got I have to actually leave the city <laughs> and and the state to get to get some peace. Uh so shout out to my family. I love you. Um uh, but anyway, but yes, I gotta go. Uh, they know already. Um, anyways, but that'll be good. I've done. I've been on vacation before, where you just like you pick a day and you just and and once you get to your story, you get into it. You have two or three chapters done. You're like, wow, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so that'll be that'll be good. I I like having stretches of time of writing because I can really develop and see where it goes. Yeah. Uh, I hate having to stop and start sometimes because you're like you're just getting into it. <laughs> then you read for a while. Then four days later, you go like, what was I writing about? You have to reread what exactly. you wrote. Yeah, I kind of like when you have longer stretches, right? I mean, same thing for you too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, a lot of that stuff came, like I said, at work. And I was just like, what, what's going to happen now? I got to a point where I felt really stuck of where I wanted to go. And maybe that's why if people have read it, the ending is the way it is. Because <laughs> I was like, I'm writing too much. There's, I, I, I haven't got, that's why it's going to be a series. Because I, I got to like chapter 30 two or something like that said, this ain't even close to being done so wow. i have to leave it on a cliffhanger that's what you did, I did. So, so okay so that's okay that's, that's a good point so originally you're just like i'm gonna write a book with mm-hmm. a story but as the journey happens and we love us we go through this as writers you're realizing i'm not done telling the stories right and mm-hmm. so i got i got to do other books correct yeah absolutely i was like you know what it's I like soap opera, so just leave it on a soap opera cliffhanger. A lot of people are like, well, where did that come from? I'm like, um, it was I kind of put stuff in there to make you think about have it it happened the way it did. Yes. But of course, just like any soap opera characters, I, I and I always say this when people, especially on Twitter and stuff, when they start, why would they do this? Why did the character do this? They don't they don't have any sense. Why it doesn't make sense. Well, because soap characters don't make sense. Soap characters work on impulse. They do things impulsively. The heroes, the villains, and all the in between. That's kind of what they do. Ew. And it's about a relationship. So exactly. That's that, that's also that's like coming here. Um. Which character is you exaggerating? <laughs> I, saying, I love it. That's why I love that. I love that. Legit. I love it. No, because it's like the folks at home, as we know, we talk, about, we talk about the show, we talk to authors. Sometimes somebody will say, I'm all the characters, you know, piece of all the characters. That's why some will say, I'm I'm living my life through this one. Uh, mm-hmm. whatever. It's my alter ego. So that's why I asked that. I love that. But that's fine. You know what I'm I can probably. I can't even guess. I don't know you that well. But I think to know you a little better. Then I'll be like, maybe I can guess at some point which one I think you might be. Um, nobody's guessed it yet. Okay. I don't know. I, especially well, the people who I based these characters of haven't read the whole book, so oh, okay. maybe that's why they don't know. <laughs> yes, that's so hilarious. I love it. I do. I love that. Oh, but my I- editor knows. My, my Landon Jones, who's a good friend of mine. I um, he helped me edit it and well actually he did the editing and um he was like this this character sounds like you i said well surprise <laughs> Buddy. okay well he knows okay mm-hmm. um where'd you find the courage to put a book out a lot of folks are scared too so yeah um, what made you different and um, it's something i always wanted to do right um even back in high school I was in a, a drama club and stuff like that. I, I was able to write a uh, little one act plays and stuff. Um, one that was actually, we actually did in class. Um, and I always found the writing to be interesting. I like, I always have characters like role playing games make you think about characters all the time, you know, coming up with, especially like villains and stuff. What is their motivation? Why are they doing this? What, you know, what makes them outside the norm of a society, you know, to make them a villain and stuff like that. So it's just, it's always been in me, I guess, to do that. And plus watching all these soaps, Dynasty and Dallas and Falcon Crest, Knott's Landing, all this stuff. My mother watched all that stuff. And 
she loved it. And we we had one TV in the house and it was in my room and I was supposed to be asleep and she was supposed to be watching the soaps. And I was just sitting there looking at Alexis do her thing, Dominique Devereaux, yeah, <laughs> Young, all of them. So that's, that's how it came up. I, I actually tried to do a soap, like a daily soap type thing. I just wrote synopsis for like three weeks where the characters were doing this, that, and the third. I have a whole character list. This this um, show that I always wanted to do. And it's got, I have all these characters mapped out and they've been sitting in my computer for decades. <laughs> So one day it may come out, you know, one yeah. day, never know. I have to do that. Um, I, maybe I should just do screenplays <laughs> once the strike is over. Maybe I should see about joining. Uh, or audio game. dramas. <clears throat> oh, audio dramas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I, know work. Somebody, I know somebody who does them. So I don't Exactly. Yep. Yes. Yep. You got to be part of me. I don't know why I'm like, sorry, y'all. It looks disgusting, but my nose is running. <laughs> That's <laughs> problems right now. It's ridiculous. Virginia has got weird weather. Uh, well, yeah, I understand. No, I've been to Virginia. I understand that. Um, but yes, you never, you never know. You have no tissue anywhere. There you go. Yeah, you there you go. I didn't see those. I'm sorry. It's just real life, kids. This is real life. We are yeah, talking about the life of a writer. Yes. Allergies have things happen. Things happen. Yes. Oh, that's funny. Um, but no, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, uh, you never know what could happen, you know, with that screenplay. You just never know. They just say all kinds of stuff going on. But I think. Uh, now there's so many different mediums, audio books, and all kind of, there's all kind of mm -hmm. stuff going on. There. Speaking of audio books, um, hopefully somebody wants to do that audio book, uh, you know, read, narrate my book. I'm leaning into that too myself for my books. Too. <laughs> like, I, I I know I want to get into that. I just haven't had a chance because I've been just so busy. As you said, we're just so busy. If we only, if Jason and I only did this, we'd be great. We got other things right. we do. Um, I want to get to that tattoo. So I'm like, I'm trying to think. I, I had, I have Candace one. Mac. Candy, Candace Mac. Candace Mac. Oh, yeah, Candace Mac. Exactly. I've had several people narrate one of my books. And mm -hmm. I released it, I released it in parts. I didn't release it as an audible or I just I released it as parts of my things, but and I liked them hearing it. But I was like, yeah, I kind of want to, I kind of want to have me also offer it as an audio because audio books are big right now. And they're they're big for people who either have poor eyesight or just want to yeah. listen to things on the way to go. I mean, just like this, it's just great, it's just great stuff to have the audio. Uh -oh. now if let me ask you this. I, yeah. Is thing. Well, you you read the book. There's so many characters. How does somebody do all those character voices, or they just read it like regular? What's so funny is there are people who can do that. I know one guy who's good with voices. Um, or you hire a couple people. You hire mm -hmm. a couple people, and they just you do all the female roles, you do all the male roles, and mm -hmm. they do it. So there are people who do it. I mean, there are people who can do it. I mean, I know they can. It's, it's one of those things that you have to find the right person. They'll tell you what they can do. You know, they can tell you if they can do it or not. Um, but that's the kind of point. I've I've heard audiobooks where the person doesn't even change the voice. They just read it straight through. And others mm -hmm. where there's a slight inflection, yeah. they letting you know it's a it's a dialogue. Um that's that is quote as quote unquote, so to speak. So I've heard both. I've heard both. But I'm not a I'm not a my mother's huge in the audio cassette audiobook world. I'm not that big in it. Um, but I, she knows more than I do. But I have, but I have heard a few. I listen, I listen to, I listen to a few. Um, it's like podcasts. So you listen to something that me, like I said, audio drama. It's like the same thing. But for me, uh, I think it can be done. Your book can be. It can be done for the right people or right person. So yeah. Another thing you is, go ahead. I was gonna say, my, the other thing is the, the book. You know, I put a lot of real life stuff in the book, like real life sports teams i don't know if that's something that's going to bite me in the butt later or not i don't know i feel I, something I, I think i think you can mention certain things i think i'm not okay. sure i think you can okay. uh but we'll we'll see i, I don't i don't know I, I have a few things in my books too i mentioned lizzo in my books so i don't know we'll see what <laughs> focus well who knows right i have no idea like that so okay so folks he is working on another another, another book, a book too so still get the I, book so he'll be ready when book is book two is not gonna take 20 years. He will get no. it, he will get it done. Um, this is Broken Circle, book one of the Broken series. Jason Jose is a, is a person. Um, you can get it. Um, uh, to well, actually, I'll let you do that part. Tell them where they can get the book and, and find you. Um, I am on Amazon, so you can go to Amazon and look up broke. I didn't realize there were like 20 different titles that have that same broken circle to it. So you'll probably have to search 
with Broken Circle, Jason Jose, J-O-S-E, uh, and it will come right up. Uh, if you put Broken Circle in there, I'm probably not going to be on the first page. because <laughs> yes, I understand that. You'll have to scroll down for a while. I'm also on uh, barnesandnoble.com. Um, where you can order it there. It's not in the stores. I'm still trying to figure out how to do that because I've given them, you know, my book and I've never heard from them. So I don't know what that process is to get same actual here. physical books in the store. So yeah, same here. I'm working on working on that too. If I find out, I'll let you know. If I find out anything, I'll let you know. I'm trying mm -hmm. the same thing too. Not as easy. But yes, follow on those places now. I'll put the descriptions in, in the and the I'll put them in the descriptions below so you can find it. Thank you, Jason, for being on the show. Thank you so much. I, I've enjoyed all of your content. You know, I'm still with the GH uh, podcast. I'll wait till you come back and we'll talk big stuff about, you know, Curtis and all them. Yes. Portia, I, that, that controversy is wild. So, yeah, yes. we'll get into that. And I'll actually pr try to start watching Younger Wrestlers and see, you know, what's going on because I took a break from them because yeah. it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, I love it. We get going. So, yes, he just mentioned, uh, which is great for me. I do soap after shows. I do like 20 of them. So, just mm -hmm. check out JLJ Media, YouTube, or on any audio streaming service platform. In between the pages, of course, is on Facebook, uh, the actual page for that. But we're on all the shows on all audio streaming platforms and on YouTube, JLJ Media. Like, subscribe, comment wherever you go. Uh, if you buy his book, make sure you buy it. Make sure you read it. Make sure you review it. Review yes, review it. Book. Let me know what you think. Yes, I need great. feedback. I need to know if what I'm writing is interesting enough to keep people coming back, you know. Exactly. You know if it's spicy, you know, that kind of stuff. Exactly. So tell him um, and do all that. And thank you very much for watching. Books are, are still here. They're not going anywhere. Read a book.